Previewing UFC 166 here at SBF Forum Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. We're talking right now with uh, Nick Kalikas from MMAOddsBreaker.com. And our call-in guest is Brian Hemminger from uh, MMAOddsBreaker.com as well. He is the uh, uh, managing editor there. And uh, right now we're going to discuss Sean Jordan and Gabriel Gonzaga. Interesting fight. Both these guys off of big knockouts. Jordan uh, got knockout of the night in uh, UFC 161. And uh, Gabriel Gonzaga knocked out Dave Herman with one punch in 162. Here we are, Jordan minus 225, Gonzaga plus 185 on the other side. Does that seem like a little bit of a high line? What do you think, Brian Hemminger? I, I'm leaning uh, Sean Jordan. Really? He has a clearly a better chin. Mm -hmm. Gabriel Gonzaga, you know, he's got a really bad history. If he gets hit, uh, he just tends to fade and just almost give up at times. So, you know, if they both land a big shot, it, you know, it's clearly going to be Gabriel Gonzaga that, that goes down, in my opinion. And... The, the under 1.5 seems right. really compelling to me because uh, both of these guys are really heavy hitters. And, you know, if Jordan, you know, cleans Gonzaga's clock, you know, it's going to do it early most likely. Right. And, uh, you know, both – obviously, you look at that last fight. Gonzaga was 17 seconds. Jordan, 59 seconds. You know, these guys are quick finishers. Uh, Gonzaga has potential potentially to uh, get in there and, and get a submission – uh, although you know, Jordan's a really athletic, you know, former LSU fullback or whatever he was, I think. So, you know, this is actually a really good matchup, but I think uh, the, the public is in the right by, by leaning on Sean Jordan just because he can take a punch so much better than Gonzaga. And if Gonzaga keeps it standing for however long he does, then uh, he's going to be in some trouble. Okay, Nick, is that how the public has been leading? Have you been taking action on Jordan? Yeah, actually, uh, my openness line of minus 135 for Jordan, Wow, believe it or not. Wow. Now, this is one of those situations, though, that I actually agree with the public here because I think they, they started betting the right way up. Mm -hmm. But when I was making the line, I wasn't sure which way these guys were going to bet. Mm -hmm. It's a competitive fight. If you look at it on paper, um, it should be a pretty competitive fight, and the actual edge goes to Gonzaga everywhere. I mean, he's a better fighter, no doubt about it. But the problem here is his chin is very weak, right. and I've been actually trying to fade Gonzaga for a while because I think he shouldn't even be in the UFC anymore. Mm -hmm. So he's definitely a, a a heavyweight that's won a few fights here in the UFC lately that I think the UFC has in a good spot right now because they could build stars off of him, give him somebody that's going to knock him out like a Jordan. Right. So that's why I opened the line a little bit low. I do get caught by once in a while uh, by surprise by the betting public. So some sharp early action coming in on uh, Jordan early on. I mean, smaller action, of course. Mm -hmm. So the line, they basically bet the line up to where it is now. And I do think the line now is better because I do believe that Jordan is probably going to get that knockout. I mean, there's a lot of suspect uh, things about Jordan as well. His chin isn't exactly the greatest. And like I said, actually on the ground, Gonzaga has a huge edge. He has a better BJJ mm -hmm. game by far. Right. He could do more things. But Gonzaga's cardio always seems to be an issue. Like we just mentioned a million times, his chin's always an issue. And I'm just not sure where he's at right now in his career. I think that uh, Jordan should definitely win this fight. But, again, I'm not going to lay that juice now because I think the line's probably about right. And Gonzaga, we can't count him out. I mean, look what he's done lately as well. You guys mentioned that knockout mm -hmm. punch. And with that suspect chin, a little bit of Jordan's, who knows? These guys getting an exchange. Gonzaga could drop that punch. So I'm going to pass as far as the bet goes because I think the betting public went the right way. All right. So it sounds like you're going to be pretty lopsided on this one. You're going to wind up uh, needing Gonzaga. And if Jordan wins, you'll lose a bit. No, not at all. Because, no. again, the line actually got bet up almost close to 3-1 to one and uh, action came back in on Gonzaga. Oh, okay. And there's going to be some heavy action, no doubt about it, coming in on Gonzaga. Don't ask me why, but there always <laughs> is. And the last few times, they came through. I mean, you can't deny that. So right. there's going to be Gonzaga backers as well. So we're going to probably be at an even spot on this fight, even though I opened it uh, with a bad line at 135, close to a pick em. Um We're still probably going to be pretty close to even on this fight. And when you have a fight like this, you know, two guys with big knockout power and suspect chins, do you get a lot of action then on the under in, in, the, in the totals? Yeah, we will. We'll get a lot of, I mean, yeah. people are going to obviously be juiced now even more so. And, uh, but I think that'll continue to go. And, you know, I mean, a lot of times in these heavyweight fights that all of us are expecting to end so quick, by surprise, it ends up yeah. going a little bit longer than we thought. I mean, it happens all the time. LeVar Johnson, Brendan Schaub, just off the top of my head, mm -hmm. um, naming one. The Velasquez uh, JDS fight last time out, that's mm -hmm. another one we just talked about earlier. I didn't expect it to go five. I mean, with so much, even though they're world class fighters, I still expected it to not go decision. So a lot of times we're fooled by uh, these easy matchups that should end uh, under. And they don't. So and now where the juice is, I wouldn't really go crazy in laying it because what if Gonzaga does survive enough in the round two? It's going to be interesting. Okay. Brian Hemminger, if you had to bet this fight one way or another, would you take the under uh, one and a half at minus 135 or would you take Jordan minus 225? Uh, I wouldn't mind betting Jordan minus 225. Maybe okay. you can toss him in a parlay. 
because I do think that he does have a better chin, even though his isn't great. And uh, Gonzaga, even though he's the better grappler, he doesn't have the greatest takedowns, and Jordan should be athletic enough to fend them off. All right, so Nick, uh, do you think that there's any chance this line will you know, dip below minus 200 or even hit like minus 150 again, or do you think it's pretty solidly where it is? It's probably going to stay around two to one or okay. so. Um, the, you know, if it if action continues to go on Jordan, then we're going to push the line up to three hundred just to draw some action back. So I, but I do think that it's going to stick around two hundred. If it drops under two hundred, I think that uh, there might be a small play to be made, right. uh, depending on where it is. I mean, if it drops all the way to one fifty, obviously, then a larger bet's to be made. But yeah, I would actually consider betting Jordan under two to one. Okay, great preview, guys. Thanks. 